midway through NBAA 2019. It was time to get out to static display and sure enough we come right on out and there it is. The 2012 Traveler, uh, an interesting airplane. You've got all these big biz jets and turbines this and turbine that and what you wanted to do was go back to basics and build a solid cost-effective commuter airplane and it sure looks like you did it. Tell us about the Traveler. Well, the Traveler itself is really kind of a partnership between Cape Air and ourselves. You know, they, Cape Air has 30 years of experience of operating commuter aircraft all over the U.S. in very harsh environments and EAS service as well. And so we were able to, to partner with them to learn both from the maintenance side, from the operations side, what is still needed. You know, there's been a pretty big gap. We're talking since 1980s or early 80s, since anybody's made anything in this category. So you know that there's definitely been a need. People are still flying those we're going to say legacy i won't call them out by name but we're going to say those legacy piston twins because there is still quite the market and they're not ready and don't need either a single engine turboprop because they need two engines or it's just it's inefficient to turn those things on to go 100 nautical miles 200 nautical miles it just doesn't make sense so what we have here is the technam traveler and we've made the biggest correction which is to the engines themselves so we partner with lycoming and what we have here is a full fadec engine is that solves a lot of the problems we have with the legacy aircraft is you know fuel management was one thing manifold pressure management bringing things back down slow so you didn't hurt the engines you know, this one is going to be able to protect itself. Um, it's managing the ignition and the uh, fuel injection per cylinder, 1,000 times a second. It really brings us up, again, 2,200 hour initial TBOs on these, and we're expecting to be able to bring that up as we have these uh, in service in the fleet. Now, as I understand it, you've got a 100 ship order from Cape Air to start with, and hopefully more in the works. Now, the Cape Air program, as I understand it, pretty much dictated what this airplane was going to be. But have you had the benefit of being able to talk to other potential customers about what they're going to want in their 2012s? Absolutely. And uh, when you look globally, we do have some orders. We're just unfortunately not allowed to say who they are at this point. Uh, but we do already have in the order book already, we have uh, some other operators between five and six aircraft fleets around the country. We're hoping we're going we're to have a nice little announcement here at the end of NBAA about a larger contract for these as well. The unique thing is, by capturing that experience from Cape Air over this eight-year partnership, we're not hearing that there's a lot of things people want to change about it. So it's, it's really nice that we're going to be entering into service with really a rock-solid foundation of what people were desiring from this. You know, if, if you've been operating a Chieftain for 25 years, you know what you want. And you still have that route, and you still have that need, and it's still questionable if I want to turn a turboprop on and do that route. So spec out the airplane. What can it do? Well, the question is, what can't it do? Now, uh, realistically, you're going to be in the uh, high 2000s, just under 3,000 uh, pounds is going to be your useful that you're going to have. It's a nine seat plus one pilot or two, whatever your SOP. In a 91 operation, obviously, you've got 11 seats to play with. You're going to be able to, depending on your altitude that you're going to be able to fly at and your speed you desire, uh, at like 160 knots at 8,000 feet, you're going to be operating in the neighborhood of about 18 gallons an hour per side. If you want to go a little faster, you're going to burn a little more, a little less. Because again, the engines take care of it. They auto lean themselves out to do it for you. You don't have to sit there and try to manage them. It's going to fly by percent power. You'll notice that the landing gear is off the ground pretty high. It's fixed. We also have the propellers. There are really lots of clearance. Lots of clearance going back to the horizontal as well. Unimproved airstrip performance, really good. We're going to be able to land this thing at about 900 feet, take it off about 1,200 feet on unimproved strips. Tell me about the cockpit. Cockpit's all 1,000 NXI equipment. You have options for radar, full radar on board. Of course, you also got the transponders as well, one or two transponders depending on your needs. We have autopilot, including yaw damper. We have an option for TKS throughout it. We have air conditioning. We have combustion heater options. We've got lots of different things that we can put through it, but the, the avionics are definitely there because this is likely going to be piloted by the first job pilot. So we want to make sure that that transition is completely seamless from what they've seen during their training phases. What's uh, one of these off the line cost? Well, we're looking at about 2.35 million euros before options.
If you notice, it just it has a great ramp presence. We've got a couple of really key features, especially from the passenger perspective. You notice when they go in up the air stair, there's a cargo loading behind that, but that actually gets closed off so that when the passengers come on, they don't see their luggage. It might not seem like a big thing to you and me as pilots, but for passengers who are uninitiated, not seeing their luggage is actually a pretty big thing. All the windows are actually set right at the seats themselves as well, so a great view looking out. It's even rigged up so that if you're doing scenic tours, you can have the headset for everybody to be able to do a narrated scenic tour as well. Thank you very much for your time. Aero TV is brought to you by... Now, the MD302 Standby Attitude Module, SAM, is even smarter. Introducing the MD32 Magnetometer, designed specifically for SAM. This optional magnetometer delivers independent heading reference. Its unique mounting flexibility, compact size, and convenient cockpit calibration ensures an easy, low-cost installation every time. Available from your local avionics dealer.